Hi everyone, it's Henry here, and in this video we're going to go through how I've added some drool effects to the squigasaur that GW sent us recently. It's a nice simple technique, so with a little bit of planning this is going to work on all sorts of applications. I've painted up the majority of the squig to where I want it, and this is partly because the materials that we're going to use to create the drool can be quite fragile. It's really important that we at least paint the area like the mouth where we're going to put the drool itself. A few of the other areas, are, you know, I'll finish off a little bit later, but areas that I'm not going to have to touch basically whilst I'm manoeuvring the squig around to get to its mouth. The first things first, I'm going to take gloss varnish, and I've used polyurethane gloss varnish here uh, by Vallejo, brand doesn't really matter, and that's because it's just a little bit gloopier uh, than your typical sort of airbrush acrylic varnish, that sort of thing. And I'm thinning it down with a little bit of water on my brush, but I've just got a blob of this on my palette. And I'm going to start from the very back of the mouth and work my way forwards. This is because I don't just want to chuck a load of gloss and whatnot at the mouth to create the draw. I'm trying to, I looked up a load of pictures, I was like googling, okay, like werewolf mouths, dragon mouths, things like that, just to get an idea of where to put all the saliva and the draw. And I think it's key that we make sure that the inside the mouth itself is the glossiest wettest area if you will. So rather than just trying to do it in a one shot with the airbrush or, or just sort of being a little bit haphazard, I've just taken my time, started at the very back of the mouth, made sure the tongue's got loads of the gloss on and now here I'm moving towards the gums. So I'm getting the base of the teeth where they join the gums and then working my way outwards. So I've made sure I've got the inside of the gums, so I mean he hasn't really got lips this guy, so the inside of his mouth and then working my way out to where I guess the outside of his lip would be. But you notice I'm not just coating the teeth in the gloss. Um, that's not where it's coming from. It's not where the drool is coming from. It's coming from inside his mouth and his gums. So this took me, I don't know, three or four minutes to do the whole mouth. Um, but it was definitely worth it just taking that bit of time. Um, see me adding it in down the sides there as well, where we're going to create this drool from. And I've left that to dry for five minutes or so. You can pop the hairdryer on it, it doesn't matter, whatever you want to do. But you can see already, we're now playing around with textures and getting a cool look. The material we're going to use is a classic. There's all sorts of other products out there, various different resins and whatnot and, and water effects, but Yoohoo, uh, this glue, has been used for donkeys to create these sorts of effects with. So that's what I'm going to use for this project. You can see it's a clear glue. It's very, very stringy, uh, for want of a better term. So I've popped it out on some plastic, and you can see here, as I'm just using a paper clip, you can see how much that when you attach it to two ends, so the plastic here and the paper clip, you get all these lovely strands of glue. And that's what we're going to use to try and create these strands of saliva. So I've used the paper clip here. You could use something like a safety pin or an old airbrush needle, something like that, but just something that's going to give you a bit of precision. And the main thing I'm working on here is I'm working from deep inside the mouth towards the front. I don't just want there to be strands of saliva on his teeth, I want them to be in the mouth, so from his tongue to the roof of his mouth and that sort of thing. And it's a lot easier to work from the deepest part of his mouth out towards his teeth than at the end go, oh I wish I put some in there and then try and work your way in. You may have noticed there's a tiny bit of sort of excess glue on that tooth there on the right uh, where it's not adhered properly. Don't worry about that, once that's dry we can just ping it off. It's a nice thing of working with this glue. Now it definitely takes a little bit of getting used to uh, and all I've done is I've got a bunch of those little plastic bags and I've put a dot blob of glue on one and a paper clip and once it starts becoming even remotely awkward I'll ditch that, get a new paper clip, put a new blob of glue on there. Because you're looking at working time of, I was finding maybe 30 seconds at best before that blob became just a little bit too unwieldy and we ended up getting really thick uh, strands rather than nice fine ones that we could build up. But you see already, particularly that thicker one I've just applied, we, we've used that sort of as the glue slightly hard and we've used that to our advantage. Um, it's really already looking really really cool. If we wanted to do finer ones like I'm doing here, so that's going in with a fresh blob of glue and you can see we can get much finer individual strands. And there was another little bit of that excess glue at the bottom that I was talking about where it's just sort of pinged off, got a bit like a hair doesn't matter, once it's dry, just pop it off with a pair of tweezers. 
it's key to let it dry though otherwise the whole thing sort of unravels as you pull it off so i'm making sure here i'm getting the corners of the mouth um, again on all the artwork that i was looking at for monsters and stuff that seemed to be where all the drool all the saliva was there was tons of it and then less of it as we got towards the front of the mouth so i'm making sure that corner of his mouth where his jaw is getting loads of it it's really just about having fun and working your way around not worrying if you get it on the wrong area it doesn't look any good once it's dry and just ping it off so that's quite a nice sort of thick strand there see what i was chatting about as it's thickened up slightly it's enabled us to pull a wider sort of strand so I've been through and done everything I wanted to do on the mouth now with all those little strands of saliva. And anywhere we've got like a big buildup of the glue, where it's starting to look perhaps like glue rather than whatever we're trying to make it look like saliva here, I'm just going back in with my gloss varnish. And I'm building that area up again, almost to make it look like the saliva is pooling in that area. So it's not just strands or dry strands. We're making sure it looks really slick, really wet, really gooey, really disgusting. And you see I've given the squig quite a matte finish to his skin, so we get even more of a contrast by doing, uh, doing this gloss effect. And if you wanted to, some of the thicker strands you could apply some of this uh, varnish to and you'll create more droplets, like I've done there on that one centre of the mouth slightly to the left. Again, just touching up any areas where it hasn't quite worked. It's super easy for us just to blend them back in as it were into the paint job it's starting to look pretty gross there we are nice and simple Ooh. If you want an idea of how to paint a pretty large squig, then check out this brilliant tutorial that Andy did for Patreon a little while back based on the Loom Curse box artwork. So thanks ever so much for watching the video. I hope you've enjoyed this slightly shorter format specific technique video. Let me know in the comments anything else you'd like us to work on like this in the future. And I'll see you next time.